Welcome back to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. And we are trying to wrap up the head area, and I think we're just about to a point where we can start working on something that I'm sure most of you have been waiting on since the very beginning, and that is the cannons that go underneath the head of our little ad -at walker. Now, these cannons have to be built up. Uh, we start off with the track that they kind of slide on. They, If you watch on the film's... They kind of retract along this track when they fire, so you get that kind of, you know, like, real strong kick effect. Boom! Uh, like, they just come flying backwards. So, uh, we're going to have to get those tracks down. Now, I'm going to simplify these tracks just a little bit. I think as long as the audience sees that they're there, uh, we'll be just fine. So, let's start off. Um, do -do 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 -do. Let's start off by creating a cylinder. And auto grid is on, which is good. I want auto grid to be on. And let's just draw this out. And the reason I'm doing this is we got this kind of rounded area back here along the back. And basically what I'm going to do is just extend this all the way out toward the front of the underside. Now, how's the thickness looking? Actually, that's probably pretty good. We can always make changes if we really feel we need to. But first, I'm going to round this out a little bit more because I'm only going to be keeping the back half. So let's see. I like even numbers. Let's go with 30. And I will convert to an editable poly. I'll press F4 so I can see all of my very pretty wires. And, ooh, you know what? Let me try something. Let's see. If I take the cap segments and, ooh, yeah, just one cap segment. Well, i got to get at least two to get what I want because I want these pie wedges, basically, is what I'm, what I'm going for there. So we'll just go with that. That's fine. And uh, let's see. Now let's convert this. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. Let me let me try this. Let's go here. Let's do a loop. And let's scale out to about there. Let's uh, make everything out here kind of transparent. I'll get faces. And let's see. We want to ignore back facing. Select by angles. Fine. Now let's just nuke all these faces. Okay. Now with that done... Uh, let's switch off ignore back facing because I'm actually going to need it for a moment. And I think we can get away with grabbing all of... Uh, well, we're going to turn off... It's like by angle. Uh, let's see if we grab all these guys like so. We can just nuke them out and that's pretty nice. Now, back to edges. Now, if I loop this, what do I get? Eh, well, it'll work. There we are. Now... Let's just take this, let's de-transparentize everything. That's my new word for the day. And we'll just drag this all the way out to here. Now we can see that it gets a little bit oversized. And the funny thing about that is we... Do we ever get a real nice idea of how long these tracks move forward? I'm betting we don't. I'm for also betting that even if we did, it doesn't really matter much. And we could just kind of make it up as we go. Uh, but I'm not really seeing anything sticking out over here, so let's not run them all the way clear to the front. There may be... Uh, there's something right there, kind of sticking up over the top. So yeah, you can see something. That's kind of nice. Nice little indicator of what we got going on. So let's see here. If I get out of sub-object mode, and I was to scale this whole thing down... Let's do it at the element level. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm just kind of a stickler for doing that. Sometimes I forget, but usually I try not to. And we'll, oh, wrong guy. Thank you. We'll slide this down, slide it forward, like so. Now, let's go with edges. I just want this edge. And let's extrude this up. So I'm just shift dragging out a copy of the edge. We'll grab vertices. I'm going to grab these verts up here at the corner, and we'll weld those. And grab these two, and we'll weld those as well. Excellent. Now, if we go back to the great, big, mighty, awesome pictures. And I cycle through these. Here, there we go. There we go. Now, let's see. We've got this kind of squarish part that kind of clicks on the underside here. And that's kind of the basis for our track. So let's go with that next. So, let's see here. We could probably build that 
from what I'm seeing here. So let's go to faces and grab these two guys. We could do an inset. Actually, let's just do an extrusion, just like this. Yes, I like it. Uh, let's extrude. Not by that much. That's just crazy. Say to about here. And click OK. And then we can inset that. And that's actually not bad. The defaults practically never work for me, but I think this time it just might be all right. So we'll just click OK, and then I'll extrude again. This time we'll go negative by the same amount. And click OK. So now we have that little raised frame that will form the basis for our track. And what else? So we've got a little main track. We've got a little cylindrical thing back here. Uh, this is going to break up into a couple of different elevations just because it looks like it needs to. So let's see. To do that, well, one way to do that would be to switch over to edges. And this means I don't have to get a slice plane. We can just ring and then do a connection. And then take our new edge and slide it back here. And let's do that again, actually. So we'll get U, ring, connect, and we'll slide this guy back as well. Okay, we, may, we may not need to do that. No, we'll do it. That's, that's fine. Except what I'm going to do is pull it back. Well, that's... Yeah. Mm -mm, I'm not, I don't want to do that. So hold down control and just click remove. Make that go away. So let's just do it this way. I'm going to hit faces, and I want, well, it's a lot more faces than I wanted, so let's make sure I hit four, not five, and get these guys, and let's frame up on them, and do an extrusion. Like so. Now, we need that kind of track that runs right down the center of all this, so I'm just going to make that out of a separate object. So let's just make a box. Give it a little bit of height. And also, let's give it some length segment. No, not length. Width segments. Thank you. Like so. And double check. All right, so it comes all the way forward. It has this funny little cylindrical shape thing. So what I'm going to do is just to keep things easy on myself... I'm going to get this guy converted, switch over to vertices, grab these vertices, and just slide this all the way up. It's right about here, so it kind of runs the entire length of everything. Now, let's grab faces, and let me grab all these faces here on this one side. And I'm just going to thin this whole thing down a little bit. Let's say right about there. Deselect, grab U, and U, and let's do an extrusion. Not much of an extrusion, just a little bit of an extrusion. And now it's kind of looking like a, a different layer. Now some other things we can do. Uh, let's grab you. Well, okay, hang on. Now I'm going to do it a different way. Let's create a box. And I'm just going to drop a box right in here. It just needs to kind of fit... And looks like I blew that one, so let's try again. There we go. I don't really want it to stick all the way through, so just a tiny little raised portion. And I'm going to increase its width so it sticks through on either side. I don't really need these extra segments. And we'll take its length and we'll extend that as well. Slide that back. And really all I'm doing here is just creating another layer of elevation. Now... Along the outsides of this track, we've got some interesting things going on. So, let's see. If I grab faces on this guy, if I can get this face, and maybe this face, and this face, and maybe this face as well, and we can scale these apart from one another, just add a little bit of extra room there sticking through right there, which I'm not a gigantic fan of, but I'm also not really all that stressed over. We can probably fix it pretty easily, though, if we just felt like it. Uh, if we grab you and you and you, we can probably get away with just nudging all this stuff inward a little. Let's see. Yeah, I'm sure. 
No worries. Now, that did cause a little bit of skewing of this circular shape back here. So the way I would probably fix that would be to just grab the vertices of this shape. And if it were me, I would wonder if I could just slide these back and make it less apparent. And if I couldn't, see if I could just scale them out a little bit. Oh, looks like I grabbed somebody I didn't need to. So watch out for that. Cool. Now I just scale these apart, scale them up a little bit, slide back a little bit. And now it still looks like a semicircle, even though it's an advanced semicircle. It's got extra oomph and extra goodness added to it for something. Now, this whole track piece that we've designed back here, it looks like it actually sticks back into this. I'm not going to stress that. In fact, we're going to put anti-stress on that, if you're unfamiliar. So we got these two little circular guys here. Let's just go ahead and put those in, and we'll just oversize them a little, and nobody will be the wiser. So let's see. Let's grab a good old-fashioned cylinder. Actually, you think we can do an oil tank? <laughs> I mean, just for the fun of it, uh, drop an oil tank right here, and do that. Aw, I clicked the middle mouse button too early. Now, I really don't want that to be on both sides. Actually, let's get back over here. So, let's see, slice to, well, turn slice on. Okay, that's just giving me a wedge. I'm trying to... You see, I never get to really use these all that much. Okay, overall, centers, blend, sides. Alright, fine. You know what? I'll just lose the end that I don't need when I'm done. So, uh, let's see. Let's just grab... Round this up. Uh, say 18. 18 looks pretty good. 22 looks better. And then... I'm going to just convert this over to an editable poly. Let's hit 4 for faces, grab by angle, and 45 might do it. Yeah, it did it. So let's delete those out. And what did that do? Oh, did we still leave Slice on? Oh, that's terrible. Terrible, Zach. Bad, Zach. All right. Boom, and boom, and blam, and then you, and then get this, and delete that. And then, yeah, and take this, slide it down poke it through there and scale the whole thing down because it's just way too big. But it looks nice. And then, yeah. Get out of editable poly mode. Put that there. Put this guy over here. And that's fine. And then just because we can or because we want to, let's do a little chamfer box that just fits right in between the two. So that's got a fit dead center there, and we'll just sink it down. So there we are. It's totally made up, totally off the top of the head. But there, there it is anyway. Now, a couple of other things. I think I, at one point, let's see, did I, tr I thought I tried to do an extrusion back here on the back. Oh, well, I, I, was, I made an extrusion on the wrong end, apparently. I got all carried away. Uh, so I need to make a similar extrusion over here. So let's just do that. Grab this guy, hit two, and ring, and connect, do, 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 and slide that back to about, well, I want that to be nice and straight, but it's really not, so I can probably get away with just scaling that down. Yeah, that's pretty close. Cool. Now, let's switch over to faces. I want this face, and this face, and this face, and this face. And we'll do a little bit of an extrusion. Okay, now let's do uh, some quick chamfering to really kind of bring this around to something that looks a little more presentable. So, if I loop this, that goes all the way around, which is most excellent. And if I try to loop here... Uh, I don't get that, which is okay. But that looks good. And that looks good. And we need this guy and this guy, and we'll loop those. And i got to be really careful with my camera here. 
not going to worry about that piece. And here, let's check and see what's going on up front. Do do do. Ah, yes. So we need to add that. All right, looking nice so far. Let's get this and loop and this and loop more. And then we'll grab you and you and you and these three. Mm-hmm. Now, let me double check what's going on back here at the back one more time, because I don't think we grabbed these corners, and no, we didn't. So let's get these. All right, let's just try this, see what we get for a chamfer. All right, that's okay. And that's okay, so let's just click OK, and there we go. So now that's all been rounded out to something that works a little better. Now back over here to our picture. We've got some little interesting greebly areas here on the outside. And there's a few ways we could do these, but probably the way that I would do it uh, would be... Let me try this. Let's grab... Oh, it doesn't really matter what we grab, but let's just grab the element... Get the whole thing. Let me hit F2. Now, let's get the slice plane out. And I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees to stand this thing up vertically. Now, we'll slide this along the length to a couple of different locations. Let's say here, and slice. And up here, and slice. And down here, and slice. Now, I wonder something. If it would save me some time, trouble, hassle, etc. If I dropped on a symmetry modifier on this thing. Let's see. It, it looks like it's already pointing in the direction I want it to. Yeah, it is. Alright, so we'll leave that on. Because we can't really tell the difference anyway. But now, I should be able to take one side and just do something on one side that just happens on the other which is good that's all I'm really going for so let's do a bevel here and that's kinda crazy now is that on the wrong side of the mirror it looks like it is well let me see about flipping that and then maybe that won't be such a problem Helps show end result, doesn't it? It is on the wrong side. Okay. Well, let's cancel that and flip back over. There we are. Excellent. F2. Well, now that should. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, let's make sure we don't have anybody selected real quick. Now grab you. And let's do a bevel. There we go. That's really all I was looking for. All right, so boom, and that's just going to stick through on that side, and that's fine. I don't really care. Actually, let's not do a bevel per se. We'll just click OK there. Let's grab this face, and we'll just extrude. And this face, and we'll extrude some more. All right. Now we're going to kind of fancify this stuff a little bit. Let's grab these three edges here, here, and here. And we're going to just slide these out. All right. 
Now, let's grab some boxes. Actually, I know I'm going back to cheating, but I'm just trying to speed things up. Uh, let's just do chamfer boxes again. They're just so much faster to work with. And we can draw one of these here, give it a little bit of height, and chamfer. And then let's do... Well, uh, let's see. I could do another oil tank, but I don't really want to. Um, let's go do standard cylinders for now. And we don't need that extra cap segment, nor do we really need it to be 30 around. Let's see if we can get away with 12. Uh, maybe a few more. Maybe 16. And then I'll pull down the radius. And then I'm going to draw another one here that's going to kind of poke through both levels. So I'm just going to stick it in there like so. And let's do a box that I'll just draw here and here. So we're just adding some little details everywhere. All right, so with that kind of done, I want to take just a real quick second and clean these up. And to do that a little more quickly, I'm going to convert this guy over. Let's just grab attach, and I'm going to attach all these pieces together at once. And in doing so, I should be able to make some of this happen just a little bit more quickly. So. Let's grab edges, and I want this edge, and this edge, and I want this edge, and this edge, and I want this edge, and its other three friends. Now let's just chamfer all those. Now let's switch over to faces, and we'll get all these top faces. Make sure ignore back facing is on because I don't want to grab anybody that's not looking at me. Okay, and let's do a bevel. And it's just going to go up a little bit and in a little bit. Click OK. Now let's just grab these faces and we'll do an inset. And we'll just do an extrusion. And we'll leave this one razor sharp because we're getting down to detail that's so small I don't think anybody's going to notice. Now let's grab everybody at the object level and looks like I've hit the auto key button so there we go press F4 and we should have the basis of our track down which is really nice. Now a couple of other things we have this funny cylindrical piece which is going to sit back behind the cannon. I'm not going to worry about that until we get the cannon in place. But we, we do have uh, some little track pieces that kind of run back behind everything uh, all back here. Not to mention this track may not in the end go as far back as it, uh, as it might need to. So let's see if we can fix that first. Because that's a real easy fix. And we'll turn on wires. All right, I think that's everyone. So we'll slide this back a little bit. Now, if I get this guy, I should be able to grab vertices here. Slide these forward. I don't think we really need that symmetry modifier anymore. So let's just reconvert this to an editable poly. Now, this piece, this little track right here in the in the middle, this it looks like it extends all the way to the back. I know we can't really see the back there, but in other shots that I've seen on the underside, and they just kind of—it looks like they run that all the way back to there. So let's do something that's a little bit similar, uh, just by grabbing the vertices at the very end of this, and we'll just slide them back like so. That works. 
Now let's go create some boxes. I'm just going to make a strip box here with a little bit of height. Let's get the move tool out, put that about here, this guy about there. And I'm just going to, oh, didn't mean to move him. Center that, pull that back this way. Now, one more box. We're going to fit kind of underneath the back of everything. Tiny little bit of height so it doesn't stick through everybody. Let's go ahead and convert that to an editable poly. I'm going to grab vertices here and slide these over. Grab vertices here, slide these over. And these will probably have to be cleaned up when we make the back. Uh, to save us a little bit of hassle, even now, we can grab these and go ahead and slide them forward a little. Should save us a little bit of time down the road. And I saw something earlier just in one of the pictures that I think I'm just going to kind of mimic for the fun of it. Uh, let's grab U. And we'll go ahead and convert that as well. Let's grab vertices here. Pull forward. Now, uh, let me see. What I want to do is make kind of a rounded shape on the end of that. So let's extrude not quite that far. Grab the scale tool and oh, I don't really want to scale that much. Oh, gotcha. So let's click OK there. Grab this guy. Let's scale that out. And yeah, now let's extrude again by more, something about there. Then I'm going to extrude this out. About like so. Scale this in. Grab edges. Give me these two edges and let's chamfer. Click OK. Give me this edge. Can I loop it? Will it loop? Not really. It's all right. And let's do a chamfer by just a little bit. So it looks cooler than it did. And then that <laughs> right about here is where we need to put in that Phillips head screw. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about that. I, I'd like to, but I'm just, I'm not. I'm trying to get this done. And, uh, yeah, we're not playing around quite as much, maybe. All right, so let's see. Do, 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 cylinder. Let's make a cylinder. And we'll just put a cylinder right here. And convert that. And let's just do uh, the face here. And we'll bevel that. So by a little, and by a little, okay, cool. So there we go, we've got that track underneath, and we are, as far as I'm concerned, ready to begin uh, working on the cannon. Now, if we take a look at our pictures, the cannon has a couple of interesting things that I always kind of snicker about, and I've been kind of chuckling about them ever since I started to, to think about modeling all this. And it's this piece right here, this little armor plate. Because it's, it's kind of rounded on the inside, and then it's got this really weird extrusion, and the sides of it are flat around here. Like, And it's not quite a hexagon, uh, so it's not like a, a wrench piece or a great big bolt. It doesn't appear to have a great deal of rhyme or reason. And if I had just seen it on a 3D model and nobody had said anything, I'd have been like, oh, hey, you need to fix this. It looks like you got kind of lazy with your, uh, your edges. But it's not. That's just the way it is. Uh, so, let's see, if we were going to build that, the first thing I see is that it's primarily cylindrically based, um, especially with what's going on here on the inside. So, now let's see, if we jump over to the side view, we can start to see a little bit of this in the viewport. So we can probably use the viewport just to kind of get things started, get a general idea of where that cylinder is supposed to be located. So let's just kind of begin there. So let's go to create. And let's drop on a cylinder and we'll shoom, just drag that out like so, give it some arbitrary amount of height. And it looks like auto grid was on and then I drew on something. So let's turn off auto grid because I really kind of want this to be floating for now. And uh, let's not even worry about how arbitrary that is just yet because we've got to do some things. We need to drag this over here. Let's frame up on it. Let's make sure we can see everything. And take a look from a couple of different angles. It's a pretty good shot. I think that'll help us out a great deal because there's the angle of that little box we started to do. 
And so we can see that we're almost in exactly the right position. I might just pull it back to about here, maybe tuck it up a little bit higher. Now for this particular piece, because I'm really working on the, the inside, I would do a, some more segments to really round this out. And so let's do maybe 36 so it looks really nice and round and clean. Let's center it up on our track. Now, if we take a look here, what I'm working on is kind of a the outer part of this plate. So it's actually two pieces, or it looks like two pieces. The way I'm going to build it is a little different than that. We're going to increase its height and then center it back up. Let's double check that. So it's it looks like if we were to get an orthographic shot, it's just a little bit wider than that total track. Now our track, how well is that going to fit? Because I'm wondering if I need to, well, I can't really scoot my track very far without protruding over here. I may need to thin the track a little bit. It looks like that may be an a honest to goodness thing. My track needs to be kind of thinned down, which is, it's easy to do, which needs to do it. Um, the way I'd handle it though, is I come over here, grab these guys and we could just start very simply by scaling all these in just a bit and that's gonna make these walls a little thinner but that's okay the only thing I really want to fix is these vertices here with this little half semi spherical thing um, I just flatten those back out and maybe slide them forward now with that done, let's clean up these two little oil tanks a little bit so that they fit inside nicely. They're kind of evened out. Not precision modeling, okay? Nobody's making that claim at all. All right, so do, 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 do. let's see here. This guy's looking okay for the time being. Yeah. Yeah, let's do this though. Let's go ahead and convert this over to an editable poly. And I'm going to center up its pivot. So effect pivot only, center to object. Ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? Align to object. No? Okay, well, I'll just get something close then. Close to what I think it should be. Now, I was looking at an interesting angle, but still, that looks closer to me than anything else. All right, well, whatever floats your boat. Uh, let's widen this up a little bit. Now, switch over to edges. Give me this edge. Give me a ring. Go ahead and connect that. Take that connection, and let's chamfer it by just a little bit. Click OK. Uh, let's see. Give me this edge. Let's ring that one. Switch that over to faces, and then let's do... A little bit of a bevel, a tiny little bit of a bevel by local normal, boom, boom, and go in a little, and in a little, and then let's do an extrusion by local normal, and go in just a tiny little bit. So now it looks like two individual parts, kind of like that. The only thing I might do though is grab. From here, maybe switch over to vertices, grab these guys. There we go. I should select a little more easily. Scale them all in to sort of thin that out. Then we can switch over to edges again. Actually, you know what? Let's do faces. Let's get you and you. Make sure ignore back facing is on before you try a stunt like this. And control click over to edges, do a quick chamfer by a teensy little amount. And click cancel. Alright, so we've got, well, we finished off the track here, and then we've started to get in what's going to become the basis for our cannon, which is good. We're started, finally starting to work on some weaponry. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I wanted to thank you for following along, and a big thank you to all of our member sponsors who make free videos like this possible. And I will catch you all on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. Take care.